Rise and shine, beautiful souls. All right, listen, I'm calling this video today. He's a great father, but a terrible husband. She's a great mother, but a terrible wife. Okay, I'm calling this video that today because I want to address the issues that surround co-parenting when a relationship breaks down. Okay, you guys ever seen a relationship where there's a man and a wife, the man cheats, and now the wife is saying, I'm leaving you and don't come around me or my baby, my baby. And she's now telling the man that he doesn't have the privilege of being around her or his biological child, right? And you'll see the man lose his top as he should because he's saying, that's my child. Me cheating on you has nothing to do with me being a, being a father. I might be a bad husband. I'll admit that. I'm a horrible husband even, but I am not a bad father and I deserve to be around my child. I haven't done anything for you to keep me from my child. What right do you have to look at me and tell me I'm unworthy of being in my child's life when I'm not doing that to you, right? And he'll be infuriated, like I said, rightfully so. But let's tap into that. Is he a great uh, father, but a bad husband? My opinion is no, he's a bad both. Here's why. Your relationship one-on-one -on -one with your child is not indicative of you as a parent overall. You understand? There's many facets that goes into you being a parent. You understand? So imagine a child, a, a, a man who plays video games with a child, plays sports with a child, but don't give him any type of advice that helps him in life. Okay? Don't, doesn't work, doesn't, treat, treat, doesn't teach him any of those type of useful things in life to help him out, but he'll play with the child. Is he a great father? He doesn't give sound advice. He doesn't live his life in a, in a way that can be, uh, his child can look up to him so he can be a good role model. He does whatever he wants. He doesn't care what he does in front of his child. He encourages his child when he cuss. He encourages his child to do negative things, throw up gang signs, but in his child's life, is he a good father? You'd have to say that father is a bad influence on that child. Even though he's in his life, he's a bad influence on the child, so no. Just being in your child's life and getting along with your child can't be enough to say they're a good father, right? Let's switch this, fellas, because I know this is already making you uncomfortable. Let's just say you have a woman and you're married to her, okay? You have a child with her and behind your back when you're at work, she's sleeping around with other men, okay? Now she gets pregnant by another man. You leave that relationship, okay? Now your child is in a separate home than you. Would you say she's a good mother? but a bad wife because I would venture to say she's also a bad mother because how can you look your child in their face, tell them you love them, tell them you would do anything for them, for their betterment. You care about their future. You care about their well-being, but she sh she's sharing her womb and sharing her womb would completely uh, be worthy of ending the relationship and, and breaking up the happy home. Now the child does not have the father inside the home. Now the child may likely have a stepfather or just be with a single mom who has several children by many dudes. Is she still a great mother, but just a bad wife? You understand? I believe that a good parent thinks about their child in all facets of life and, re and, and, and represents their child and their family in all facets of life. You understand? A good man, a good husband, and a good father would be faithful because he knows the risks of cheating on his wife. He knows that his child would be negatively impacted through that. A good woman and a good mother would never cheat on her husband, would never break the vows and the promises made to her husband. She will live in such a way that it's, it's going to positively impact her children long-term. That man that she laid with and had those children with, she is depending on him to do his part, which is, you know, leave the inheritance, uh, protect, provide, improve, okay? Why would she throw that all out the window and now her child doesn't have a protector, a provider in his life, uh, in the home because of her own actions. She would have to accept that she is not that good of a mother. You see what I'm saying? Because she's carried herself in such a way that ruined her marriage. Now that now the home is broken, because if you ask the child how they feel about it, they'll tell you they were negatively affected whenever you behave that way. So get rid of the idea that uh, I'm a great, great father, but just a bad husband. Here's what I will tell you, though. Yes, you you need to be you need to grow in both areas. Um, how you in, in being a father and a husband, or you need to grow in both areas, being a mother and a wife. But I will say this: when that when the woman is so um, emotionally offended and hurt by by you um, cheating on her or or doing doing whatever you did to her um, to to ruin the relationship, 
she actually does not have a right to keep you from your child simply because y'all have a child and it's also biologically yours. So while you are a bad father because you blew it, you, you were going out and misrepresenting yourself and your family, and now your relationship is ruined and you're, not, you're no longer in the home with your child, you definitely need to grow as a father, but there's still not a right to keep you from your child. See, this is why we should think about uh, and put put more thought into who we're sleeping with before we sleep with them. Because once you have that child with them, it's a wrap. Unless they're physically harming that child or, you know, on drugs really badly and they are the only provider for that child, the, the, the main guardian for that child, the main um, parent for that child, it ain't a whole lot you can do to say that child is unworthy. The fact is, whether or not they're a good parent or not a good per person or not, they're that person's father. And that's who your child's going to have as a parent because that's who you laid with. Unfortunately, once you have a child with this person, um, it, it, that, it is what it is. You see what I'm saying? There's, there's, a, there's a small amount of cases that I would say deems it worthy um, for you to go and try to remove that father from your life and your child's life. You know what I mean? But a lot of times it's just emotion. You got cheated on, so you're angrily saying, you don't deserve to be around me or the baby. You don't have a right to do that, even though he's not a good father either. You see what I'm saying? Like, and I, and I hate to just be putting out information saying you're not a good father. Let's just say you need some growth in that area. You need some growth in the area of being a mother because while you're not trying to be a bad mother, your behavior shows that you have low values as a mother because if you cared about your child that much, you would do everything to honor your commitments so that so the father of that child can stay in your life and continue to do what they're doing and vice versa. The man should treat you appropriately. You have his child. There should be some type of respect that comes with that, a, a new type of commitment that comes with that. You have my seed. I owe it to you to be faithful to, to or to, not to necessarily to be faithful if that's not my covenant, but I, I owe it to you to keep the covenant or the or the um, the uh, dynamic in which we agree to and, and, and be faithful to that dynamic. If I told you I'm not seeing other women, I shouldn't see other women. We should be a family and I should focus on my family and grow my family. And that speaks to me as a man and a father and a husband. It, it hurts you in all three aspects, family, when you out here living a whole different life behind your family's back, a totally different life because you affect them all. Your wife is not going to be the only one hurt. Your children is going to be hurt. Your son going to be hurt because of how you hurt his father or his mother. The daughter's going to be hurt for the same reasons. And they, they, and they definitely would be hurt if they have to now move back to their home state because the whole family moved with you. And now she ain't got no more reason to be out there with you and now she's moving back to be closer to her family. And now your kids are going to be a plane flight away from you, hours and hours away from you. And now they rarely get to see you. They're probably going to blame you. So you saying, I'm a great father because I get along with my kids. We watch cartoons together. We, I cook for them. I clean for them. I change their diapers. I take them to school. It's a lot more than that to be a great parent, man. A whole lot more. That how you personally treat your child is not all it takes to be a great parent. I, I, I don't want to offend y'all, but I want y'all to accept this hard truth. No one has a right to tell you you cannot see your child because of something like cheating. But you you can't claim to be a great father or mother if you are treating the, the mother and father of your children and that you are in a dynamic with, a relationship with, badly. If you're cheating on them, lying to them, and doing things to disrespect them and your family and lose your family, you can't say, I'm a great father, I'm a great mother. You're going to have to admit you need work in all three areas as being a man or woman, as being a husband or a wife, and as being a father or a mother. You need help in all three areas and you need to grow because your lack of character, it hurts you in all three facets and you got to be honest with yourself on that, okay? So take the time, family, to be a stand-up person for your family. If, if they are worthy of you committing to them and you making them your family, when you leave it out, out from, from them and they are not around you, you should still represent your family. When women approach you, men, turn them down as if your wife is standing beside you. Turn them down in a way that would make her proud. Seriously. Make a habit of doing that. Because a lot of times we don't have the discipline to be able to say no. So we end up blowing something that we are investing in for long term for our future. And we'll blow it because some girl came up that looked good. And that moment will blow that. And that's why I say we need emotional intelligence because we, we, we blow uh, things that we've, that we've been working hard on too much, like goals and endeavors that we really care about. We will blow them in a moment's notice because of instant gratification, whatever the case may be. 
Turn her down as if your wife was standing right beside you in a way to make her proud of you. Same thing, ladies. Respect your king whenever you're not with him. You still dress appropriately. Still carry yourself like a lady and a mother. Act like you have these things. Act like you are that person. Don't get out here and pretend to be somebody totally different and, and you know, act like you single now that, that your husband ain't with you and you're a totally different character now. If he saw you the way you acted when he wasn't around, he would say he didn't even know you. It would blow his mind how fake you are. That's not a good wife or a good mother. And it's not a good person, period. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with the people around you. And that way you can be you. 100%. And, and when you can be you and the people around you will allow you to be you, it ain't nothing wrong with none of that other stuff. It's just when you break agreements and you lying to people and you covering up stuff and you being deceitful and you hiding stuff, all of that makes you look bad. There are people out here that have open relationships who do sleep with other people while they're in a relationship. And because it's not breaking their rules, they're not a bad person or a bad mother because their relationship will likely not be severed because of cheating. They don't make cheating a problem. So they actually respect each other enough to stay within the guidelines that they do, even if they tell each other up front, it's not going to be uh, any exclusivity when it comes to sex. You see what I'm saying? But please understand, man, how you treat a person in your union, it definitely says a lot more than just your title in that union as a husband or wife. It says a whole lot more than that. It talks about, it speaks about you as a father, as a human being, all that stuff. I just, it just does family. So I encourage you guys to, 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 uh, Put more thought in how you treat people. Put more thought into how you carry yourself. Have more respect for yourself. That way you won't mistreat people like that. And that way you don't have to worry about losing your family and not, not being able to see your child because you couldn't keep it in your pants. You understand? Or, or having to fight for your child because we don't want to have to do that. Like we want to be able to see our children regardless of if this relationship break down. We don't, we don't deserve, we don't, do, and, we, and you don't deserve it. You don't deserve for her to tell you you can't see your child, but emotions be high in that moment. And that's why I say it's very important that we vet better. If you know that she's, that she don't have a temperament of a woman that you would want to have children with, I'm not going to say protect yourself. I'm going to say, don't sleep with her at all. Why even lay with her? If you know that man doesn't have the character that you would like in your husband, why would you sleep with him at all? And I know a lot of y'all be like, Kevin, you too serious. Some of us just want to get out and have a little fun. Well, what I'm saying is having that little fun is what puts you guys in that situation that you need to, that, that, that you end up in. When you could live your life trying to uh, better yourself for the family that you would like to create, uh, when you could live your life uh, investing in the in the positive aspects of the, of the reality you want to create by being faithful to that, you know, vetting. And, and you might say, well, I, sometimes I want to get out here and just be wild. Well, that's low emotional intelligence. Because if you're really smart, why would you want to take three steps back, four steps back, or risk losing your whole agenda anyway, your whole endeavor anyway? Uh, simply because you want some instant gratification. What you will learn is none of those people are worth it. Regardless of how lonely you may feel at that moment, if you have a child with that woman, you're going to learn in the future it was never worth it and you should have just went home lonely. And ladies, you're going to say the same thing. I should have just went home lonely instead of messing with this dude. I knew he already had children he wasn't taken care of. I, I saw how he treated women and I, I heard about how he treated women and how he carried himself anyway. And I still lay with him and had a child. I don't have a right to now say he can't be in the child's life because he made me mad. That opportunity that I had is long gone. I had that opportunity before I ever slept with him when I was sitting on the toilet, letting his skeet drain out of me. And day and day and day after that, when I could have taken a plan B or gotten an abortion, I, I let the child stay inside of me. And I knew this person had had bad uh, uh, character. So don't be don't don't be mad at anybody but yourself. Say to yourself, I should have done better. I should have done better. But that person's that person's going to be in your child's life. And it's wrong to try to keep them out of your child's life if they're not doing anything to actually hurt your child, physically hurt your child or cause your child harm and, and like that. But. If their character ticks you off to where you're saying, I don't want this person to be in my life because of how they treat me anymore. And that means that they also can't be around the child. You're going too far to try to punish them. They don't deserve that. They may not deserve to be in your life, but they deserve to be in their child's life simply because they are the father. And I know you're going to try to say, well, their character ain't worthy of it. And I feel like, you know, if you're a bad person, if you carry yourself, as a, if you're selling drugs, if you're committing crimes, if you're speeding, if you treating me like crap, then you can't see my child. I know you think that that's okay because you're upset, but I'm telling you, it's not. The moment for you to decide that is long past once y'all have a child together. So no, you're not a good father, but a bad husband.
You're, you need to grow in all areas, to be honest with you. You're not a good a mother, but a bad wife. You need to grow in all areas because you you definitely you definitely have some some chinks in your armor on being a good mother if you're cheating on your husband. Like if you're cheating on the father of your child, like that's not a good that's not good because you're you're gonna blow his protection, his provision, and his mentor, his his father figure, the person that's in his home protecting him. You're gonna change all of that. And that's why the man will get so mad because he's like, I wanted my, my family in the home. I wanted to protect my family and marry and marry and be married. And, and you messed that up because you done cheated on me now. And you're thinking, well, we can still fix this. No, you can't still fix this. He don't trust you. He's not going to be able to be masculine to you the same way because he's not going to be able to invest in you without feeling vulnerable and, and insecure. And you've blown it. And now he's like, dang, why you why? Why I got to have a child with you? Because in his mind. Now his child is going to be outside of the home because he's not going to stay with you and he knows you're going to take the child too. And now it's a double whammy for him because he loses both. For you ladies, y'all nine times out of 10 are going to take y'all child with y'all. But the man, if he cheated on, he got to watch you and his children walk out the door if he's going to be strong enough to move on from you. You see what I'm saying? You're not a good mother if you're doing that because your children are now outside of the home and you're now fending for, to find them a new father or now you're fending to try to take care of them. So you, you'll see guys say, my mother, she's a great mother because I watched her work two and three jobs. She worked third shift, but you didn't see her cheat on her husband, which is why he broke up with her. And now she's having to do all of that just to take care of the child. And the child looks at it and says, I can't stand my father because he could have been there and made my mother's life a little easier where he wanted to. She wouldn't be faithful in some cases. You understand? So I urge you guys to consider all of that stuff. All right? Be evolution, be the change that you want to see. No candle loses its flame from lighting another. And if you were to ever find yourself in the middle of chaos, it is in that chaos that you found yourself. Peace.